does india really have the problem of unemployment or is it just the other way around and what is this new trend emerging in the job market post pandemic let's check out they have not returned nor are they likely to return who the migrant workers at least that's what the industry association cii's decoding job report 2022 suggests it expects a fall in migrants returning to tier 1 cities in 2022 in comparison to 2021 leaving a gap of 68% For non-tier one cities, it's slightly better. The shortfall is likely to be thirty-two percent. Why? Because a large majority of these workers have decided to stay back in their villages, primarily moving into the agriculture sector. And if you think that the problem is only related to blue-collar jobs, wait. As for white-collar jobs, the report highlights a limited talent pool at all levels. entry level mid level and upper levels particularly a shortage of 32% software engineers amazon web services aws predicts that the number of workers in india requiring digital skills will need to increase 9 times by 2025 to meet the increasing demand for the workers by the industry Another study by Nascom Genome reports that India could face a shortage of 14 to 19 lakh techies by 2026. But how can that be when we know that India has the largest number of engineering education institutes and produces the largest number of engineers in the world? Now before we analyze that let's check out whether the situation of management graduates is any different. Looks like not really meet anuradha moga she is completing her mba this year that is 2022 not from any of the ims but from a women only business school located at a remote place called lakshmangarh in rajasthan around 140 kilometers away from jaipur it's called school of business modi university and guess what she has got eight placement offers in her hand meaning eight companies are competing with each other to hire this one student and she is not the only one 65% of her batchmates have got two or more offers in their hand in fact 95% of the batch had got placed by january 2022 itself six months before even the completion of their mb program so where is the problem of unemployment in fact it seems just the opposite the problem of shortage of skilled manpower by the way neither anuradha nor her friend rajshri who has been picked up by one of the prestigious brands like price waterhouse coopers is among the toppers of the class they didn't have the highest marks but what they did have were the skills required by the industry and how did they come to know what kind of skills the industry is looking for for that you need to meet this man dr anirban sen gupta dean school of business modi university who has formed a team of industry professionals and experts to take input from on a continuous basis what is more he would make sure that not only his faculty team but also his students are interacting with the industry professionals on a regular basis so that everybody remains updated about the emerging trends in the business world and it is because of these industry interactions and inputs that they have learned among other things about the acute shortage of skilled manpower in the area of esg and sustainability and have accordingly launched a new specialization in the area of sustainability management while majority of the business schools barring a few premier ones have not yet woken up simply because either they are not aware about the changes happening in the business world or they refuse to adapt to these changes no wonder 
only 48.7% of total youth in India is employable according to India Skills Report 2022 by VBOX. Meaning more than 50% of youth, the so-called educated youth is simply not employable. And that brings me to the first and the most important point that there is actually no problem of unemployment in the country. There is a problem of incompetence. There is a problem of skill gap. A large majority of these so-called educated but unemployed youth believes and wrongly so that qualifying an examination and getting a degree makes them educated even without learning or acquiring any new skill. Also, there is a fundamental problem in the approach of most of the mediocre education institutions who consider students or their parents as their customers and they would just keep pleasing them without paying any attention to the requirement of their actual customer that is industry. So what they need to understand is that for an educational institute, a student when takes admission is the raw material who they are supposed to train, educate and do the required value addition and the skilled student is their finished product to be consumed by their customer that is industry or society. By the way, this skill gap is not the only reason why industry is facing a shortage of manpower. There is something more. What is that? Well, if you ask these young graduating students about their career aspirations, don't be surprised if some of them say that they are not interested in doing a job at all. Nor are they interested in joining their family business. Then what do they want? To start up, become an entrepreneur, freelance or simply pursue their hobbies and interests. Welcome to New India. According to the Economic Survey 2021-22, new startups in India have grown 20 times. 20 times I repeat in last 5 years. And since many of these startups are also hiring aggressively, they are making the already scarce manpower scarcer. And as if that was not enough, there is a new trend which has emerged post-pandemic. The Great Resignation. Yes, that's the term. Coined by Anthony Clouds in 2021. To describe the trend of the mass voluntary exit of employees post-pandemic. People are leaving jobs in their 30s, 40s, 50s, irrespective of what stage of career they are. For a variety of reasons. In fact, if you look around in your own family and friend circle, I'm sure you will find enough examples of people leaving their jobs. For instance, meet my brother, my only sibling, who quit his job last year at the peak of his career, despite being offered a huge hike by his employer. Why? To start his entrepreneurial journey. My brother-in-law has recently resigned from the position of Vice President and Country Head Volvo Group South Africa just a couple of months back. What for? To launch his own brand in the area of what he calls as intelligent clothing and also to help the budding entrepreneurs in pursuing their dreams. While this trend has been more prominent post-pandemic, but of course, this is not to deny the fact that even in pre-pandemic era, one could find examples of people leaving their jobs to pursue their interests. For example, I had left my corporate job as head of regional processing center at ICC Bank to pursue my interest in teaching much before the pandemic had hit us. You can find examples even from the previous generation as well. Few years back, my uncle had quit his government job and ventured into something he enjoys doing the most, that is poetry. And today, he looks at least 10 to 15 years younger than his actual is, with an unmatchable energy level. In fact, this trend of living a meaningful life, rather than following that rat race of being a money-making machine, is fast catching up. The concept of fire financial independence and retire early 
is spreading like fire. By the way, if you also want to achieve that financial independence so that you can live a life the way you want to, then first you need to decide how much of the investment corpus is enough for you. If you want on that topic, maybe I'll make some video someday. But for the time being, we can go by what majority of the experts suggest, which is to take a ballpark figure of 30 times of your monthly expenses. So if your expenses are up to rupees 1 lakh per month, you can achieve the financial freedom with a corpus of rupees 3 crores, provided that is invested appropriately. And if you want to know how and where to invest to build that corpus, then you can watch this video, Share Market versus FD, if you haven't already. Because in this video, I have talked about the simple, safe, and powerful investment strategies for creating wealth and is perhaps one of the best advice I could ever give, especially to someone who is in the beginning of his or her career. Thank you and Jai Hind.